well to to describe myself we need a couple of days no i've been uh, i've been mountain biking basically for for all my life and you know um i'm 50 years old um just turned last year and uh, i've been doing for all my life bikes uh, as a mechanic as a sales guy on a bike shop and then starting my distribution company and then years ago started uh, uh, to organize events. In 2012, um, we met uh, with uh, Chris Ball and a bunch of other people and we decided that it was time for the Enduro discipline to have, um, let's say, a, a series uh, on a global scale. series today represent the um, the global series that showcases enduro racing all over the world it's not just uh, um, the eight uh, event that formed the enduro world series and the trophy of nation which uh, has been relaunched last year uh, but there's also the continental series as well as the qualifier events basically um, we decided to to give enduro a structure on a global scale so that people can enter can start and do it on a, on a regional or national event and basically grow up uh, through our series to the main series which is EWS and eventually um, have the honor to represent their own country race for the flag for their nation at the trophy of nation team uh, with the new new riders on board uh, but most of all uh, with my my good friend uh, Primoz during the recent couple of years of uh, of our series Orbea just put together this um, super strong team very well organized very professional and this year um, you had uh, another uh, key guy for me in the history of the sport uh, which is Damien, Damien Rotton. Damien won um, his very first uh, EWS in Latwil, and I was there announcing, and I remember, I have goosebumps, guys, if I think about it, I remember uh, uh, waiting for um, Damien on the finish line, on the last stage, the last stage was just coming in the heart of the paddock, and we celebrate his first victory here. My first victory was amazing. Um, I was, uh, it was in 2014, so it was only my, uh, my first year uh, as a pro. So I was still uh, learning the sport and um, at the top of the stage we were like, I think not even one second with a three or four rider for the win. And I was um, like super excited to go as fast as I can. And then I was like, thinking please don't crash because i was <laughs> i was uh, often on the ground yeah it was my my uh, it was my day so i didn't crash and i i won the race in a way i have a, a little of a special bond with uh, you know with the people uh inside orbea so too bad that we we cannot meet for now but i really hope to see you all in uh, in zermatt for uh, the kick off the season Yeah, I talked with Orbea since uh, already three years. To me, it was an evidence because I, uh, I, I after my uh, my injury, I, I I needed a new a, a new challenge. You know that uh, I really want something uh, different to keep me motivated and hungry. So 
when um, when I got this call, man, I was uh, I was so happy. So it was e easy to say uh, yes, let's go. So they know how to run a team, and uh, and you can feel it when you are on the team because everyone is behind you to get ready to race and to get ready to win race. So yeah, I felt great, and man, I can't wait to to go back uh, racing. in this uh, current situation is not so easy because we need to manage uh, riders, uh, races, uh, sponsors, everything. We cannot sleep now, we are working, we have the movement, uh, the riders are training, of course limited in their regions, uh, but the sport, we need to keep it alive this is the most important thing now i love to be part of this uh, organization like a team manager of the team because this is my passion uh, you know when you when you love something when you love to do something when you see the challenge in this um, when each day is something different uh, this is like riding the bike uh, even if you go on the same trail hundred times the next time hundred first time will be something different always you need to adapt something always you need to improvise something uh, this is challenging for me and uh, I love these things because they are put in the rules but still really really open because always you need to go through something which you never been there Actually, all our work is consisting in saving the human beings because the people are the most important thing uh, we need to stay safe and healthy uh, respect the government rules because each country has a little bit different but from the other side we are doing for the future we're basically dealing every day with uh, um, different setups and changes that occur to the different countries in the world so to be able to organize uh, something that is um, that has a value for our partners uh, for the venues and most important for our riders um, is the challenge for for 2020 so we decided basically to go with two blocks of event one block in europe starting in zermatt uh, beginning of september and we're gonna do um like a super tight schedule between September and October in Europe. Uh, in this way, we can eventually quarantine riders coming from abroad. And then in November, we move to South America, South and Central America, uh, Colombia and Chile uh, for the last two rounds. Um, of course, there will be, you know, it, it's gonna be a different championship, but we want to, as much as we can, um, provide riders, industry and venues with our platform to, let's say, spread not the virus, but the love for Enduro. My role is team manager, no, now, but I was I was a rider. I was a competitor. Still, I love riding because adrenaline on the start. That is it. What we are looking for, no? And uh, somehow I can feel the riders in this moment is really difficult to to train, to be focused, to be dedicated when nobody exactly know when the thing will stop, when the governments will open the borders. Uh, but keep faith. This is important. Mm, so yes, the situation is not easy as a rider. As you know, uh, you, we, we prepare the, the two first run uh, really hard and then uh, <laughs> we, uh, we got the information that we can race in Colombia and Chile because of the, of the COVID uh, situation. It was tough to, to understand because uh, yeah it was a it was a hard winter on the bike so tough uh, tough decision but yeah safety uh, safety first so we uh, we understood especially on the event side uh, um to be honest uh, in the beginning we, we didn't think it would have been so bad
the future of the EWS, uh, well, I think it's uh, it's gonna be great because it's a new sport and um, every every season there is, a, as I know before, there is a new venue, new rider, so there is a, everyone is super excited to come ra racing. The future of Enduro World Series for me is really bright because this sport like sport like we know it uh, in last last years last decade is is young sport uh, okay if i look my starts in mountain bike i will say that i did enduro already almost 30 years ago uh, it was different but basically it was this climbing the the mountain to enjoying descent this is enduro no but as industry is following this sport, as sponsors, as people who like this sport are investing, are developing, are changing. Uh, if I say with another word, we are on the start. Everything is open. Uh, our sport will grow because it's fun, it's attractive, it's interesting. From one side, it's really healthy because you are in the nature, you are enjoying the mountains, fresh air, uh, wonderful views. This is mountain bike with one word. You can have everything. The future of uh, EWS for, um, for 2020 is, um, I would say, half written. Uh, and when I say half written is uh, the plan so far uh, is to do part of the season and uh, of course, uh, I mean it won't be it won't be the, the same season. Um, for the future, um, well, we always discuss what's the next step, what we need to do, what we want to do, uh, where is the sport going, or where we want the sport to go, and basically, you know, have this drive uh, for for the future. Uh, I do see the need of exploring some um, new venues and new places. Because Enduro is still, uh, you know, there's, there's of course the racing part of it, but there's also the discovery part, which I really love, which is kind of the essential of mountain biking. Um, on the other hand, we're going to stick to some uh, classic of, um, you know, our venues. And uh, that's also important because when you go back to a place, you know, year after year, you know, the local restaurant, the local... Uh, uh, bar and you know the people so you basically connect and bond uh, with the local culture and scene